So I okay. guess we can get started. All right. So let's, uh, I guess, welcome everyone to our, this will be our third live discussion. So yep. far. Story since number three. Since we started the podcast, um, Come Up for Air. Um, this is our first book that we've um, featured on this podcast, which is authored by Cindy Webster Beecham. And the story, the book that she wrote, when, when did you write this book? I, I mean, 2007, this, when I got it published. Yeah. Imagine it published. that. Yep. It's struck by Lightning. Um, it's a book of short stories based on dysfunctional relationships. And um, the stories are very deep. Um, very I, real. Very real, based on a lot of true situations. And um, so we wanted to kind of point out a lot of the realness that is in the stories and the dysfunction to open up discussions and possibly um, as a community work on on solutions together, you know, not just uh, pointing out the problems, but also getting people engaged to discuss these issues that a lot of people are familiar with um, and specifically in our community and um, um, hopefully work on on solutions on, on making things better. So um, this is the third story, yep. um, Bells and Whistles. And um, so we're just going to go through, we've got through five, five episodes so far, and we're just going to go through a little short recap on um on the first five episodes um that we've uh featured so far on the YouTube podcast. Um before we go over that I, I wanna encourage anyone listening um to definitely visit the website, the webpage at SidWebsterBeacham.com. Um also go to the YouTube channel come up for air. From there, like and subscribe. We're trying to build up our subscribers. Also, we want you to join our email list. So please go to the website. Um, put your email and your name information in the email list so that you can stay up to date with um, everything that we're doing, other projects that um, Sid is doing as well. She has um, a movie and some other projects that's up and coming. And that way, if anything ever happens with, with the YouTube account or Twitter, we still have a way to keep in touch with everyone. And um, we can email you based on anything, any up and coming events or um, things that we're doing on social media. So definitely please go to um, SidWebsterBeacham.com and sign up on that email list. And also go to the YouTube channel and subscribe and share so that um, you can get all the notifications when we each episode that we um, upload, which we do once a week till we get through the whole book. And then we'll move on our next project from there. Okay, so let's start with, um, and also there's a number that you can call if say you wanted to just leave a voicemail um on one of the episodes with your comment if you're not into typing you can also call in and leave a, a voicemail comment and we can maybe um play that on one of our live discussions and um and and also use that um you know in our content when we um discuss uh some of the the work that we're putting out um so we'll start with episode one for Bells and Whistles. Did you have anything to say, Sid, before we we get started? Uh, no, that, that was pretty much all of it. <laughs> all, you know, you pretty much got, gave the, the whole intro. And, you know, like and subscribe. That's, yeah. that's a big deal, you know. So please do that on the YouTube channel. And like you said, uh, sign up for our email list so we can make sure we stay in touch. Exactly. Um, so, so story... Story number one. I mean, well, story number three, but part one. Right. Single, Single. and happy. 
So basically, um, Carol and Jeff, this is a story about, about a, a man and a woman, Carol and Jeff. Um, basically, it's Carol's perspective for, from what I can tell so far. Um, and she's, she's definitely with the title, says single and happy. It seems to me that Carol um, is an older women, woman. And she's been through a lot of probably bad situationships in her life. <laughs> yep. And at this point, you know, in her life, she's grown mentally to accept the reality that she may be single and remain single. And she's going to allow herself to be happy with that. Yes. Um, and also, um, you know, she's going to have fun. I like that. I, I, I really ho like that because I can identify with that, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, you know, and I think a lot of men are offended by this attitude, but they shouldn't be. I mean, you know, sometimes you just have to listen to your own self and do what makes you feel good. So right. I like her confidence, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and I guess I wouldn't ever, I, it do, she doesn't come off as lonely at all to me in this story. Right. It seems to me that she's just embarking on some adventure that she had in the past never thought she ever would do, you know? Right. So, I mean, because, you know, but the funny thing is, Right from right out the door, she's she's suspect of this guy, Jeff, because she has seen him around before. He never right. paid any attention to her. And then suddenly, you know, here he comes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I, I it, you know, it starts off talking about their agendas because she's looking at him like, uh, what the heck? You know, I'm not mm -hmm. doing anything. And. I'm not looking at him, you know, it wasn't a serious, um, you know, she wasn't looking at him as a serious relationship possibility. Which is a good thing. She's not in a, she's not in a desperate mindset. Cause like That's you what said, I mean. yep. versus being lonely is a mindset. She, Isn't it? And so she's confident and, and accepted being single and, and, and she's choosing to be happy, which is one of your sayings. Yep. With that, but you know she's not lonely, and so right. that 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 loneliness and that de being desperate makes you vulnerable. So now she's ready, and you know, to hopefully to deal with Jeff and and not get caught up. <laughs> and right, and she right exactly. That's the danger of it. But she she's going in the door. You know, she's going in knowing that his motive is sex. Right, mm -hmm. that's what she's thinking, and mm -hmm. she decided to be down with it. So, exactly. You know, that's that's where she starts off with this. So, right. So she understands her agenda and his agenda. I don't know if Jeff understands that she understands it though. Because he yeah. I think you know, she, men, she, men ego, they think that they really be ooh. <laughs> they, they they just don't understand that a woman could be happy like in that. that mindset. Yeah. Or like I said, offended about it. You know, right. because they want to believe that women are just in hot pursuit and can't live without them. Now, right. it's not that women want to live without them, but right. sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of your sanity and your peace. And uh, right or wrong, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, I think you know, her, she feels, I, I like this story, to be honest. She, right. you know, she feels empowered. Right, because so. people put pressure. They put pressure, like, oh, you know, uh, it, it's always, it always comes up, like, is it better to be single or in a relationship? I mean, I think it's personal. You have to look at everybody but with, um, with, and, and look at the situation on an individual basis, because what may be good for one person may not be good for somebody else. It may not be, a re you know, being in a relationship might not be for everybody. Yep. Yeah. So this is this is a good example of, of of someone being able to be single and also happy. Yep. 
And what you just said really leads to um, the next episode, which is called traditional pressure. Boy, oh boy. I, yeah. You know, had this conversation with someone too the other day, um, actually today too on Facebook. Oh, wow. Traditional pressure. Yeah, because um, it, it really, you know, the tagline for this uh, episode is even bad advice from jealous and or ignorant people mm -hmm. who are stuck in traditions that are unproductive and sometimes dangerous cause Carol to turn away from church. Mm. So, um, it happens too, too often. It too, actually pushes too often. away from the church. Yep. And, As it did for Carol. Yep. Yep, and the funny thing is it comes from family and friends, people that you're around. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's, it's really... That you're miserable and, and lonely. Right. Yep. And pressure you. Exactly. In that, in that way. Yep. And then you make you feel uncomfortable when there's no need to. Exactly. And it causes some uh, women or and men, I guess, to get involved in relationships they might exactly. not have have chosen to do just exactly. to satisfy people who are around them saying things like, well, when are you going to get married? You know, what's is something wrong with you? Right. You no. Know, um, you know, it, it's really, really a shame that that we put each other under pressure. Um. And the pressure at the church is just um, ridiculous, astronomical. And I mean, the, there's no, uh, I, I call it spiritual malpractice, like, because they uh -uh. don't even counsel people properly on, on um, you know, the makings of a strong, healthy relationship. And then the women and the men, you know, you get, sing you get a single person. A lot of people go to church looking for a husband or a wife. Yep. You know, and then you have someone that's they're single, and then you have the the people at the church, um, you know, not um, being welcoming to maybe a, a nice looking woman or a man. They're feeling some type of um, jealousy, yep, or insecurity in their own relationship, and then they're um, taking it out on like Car like Carol's situation. You know, those women. Probably were feeling insecure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he was going to um, threaten their relationship with their husband because their husband, you know, may have his own issues of infidelity. Well, and think about the church. Mm -hmm. it, you Most churches are like 80, 90 percent women. And so the women who are married there are, you know, man, many of them are probably on the defensive, especially. You, and then the men could take advantage of that oh, ocean yeah. of women that are around them. Yep. You know. A lot of them do. <laughs> yep. Yep. So it's a mess. It, it, it's, it, 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 could be, it could be a real mess. So, so you know, it, just like traditional pressure, it was pressure all, for, all around from the church. Yep. And sadly, you know, in the story, Carol just felt the, that the vibe was just ugly when she was being pursued by one of the married deacons there and then the women in the church were blaming her for it right so she left the church mm -hmm. so that, wait exactly you know you know so yeah and, and who wants to deal with that and she's going there you know for spiritual <laughs> uh you know spiritual spiritual to be spiritually fed <laughs> right, and then you have to deal with drama, you know. So that you had no control over. Exactly, exactly. No, nobody's gonna deal with that. So then, and, oh, go ahead. No, you could go. We want to move on to. The I was going to move on to yeah, part three, liberated cougar. So in this one, Carol reflects on how she came to be so confidently serene as she steps into uncharted waters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so in this one, um, I like this, this 
uh, episode two. Well, I like this whole story, but this episode, she uh, she's bored. So, or, you know, she's just like has nothing to do or, you know, looking for something to do and decides she's going to go take herself out to eat something that she right. would do on occasion and had been past the uh, point of feeling embarrassed about going to eat out alone or doing things on her own. Now this, you know, like I said, a lot of this I could identify with, but I kind of fell into this type of situation because I used to travel a lot alone for my job. So I just got used to being able to do that. But then I noticed there were a lot of women that were doing, you know, that. You didn't have, you don't have to feel some kind of way just because you're going out to a nice restaurant and eating alone. Right. Uh, um, you know, so she does that and she's reflecting in this situation, in this uh, episode that she's not in a predicament. She feels serene and, and she's reflecting on the predicament she had just got out of with an ex-boyfriend who she had a difficult time extracting from her life. Mm-hmm. He, he was a real jackass. She yeah. couldn't take him anywhere. He was loud and he was offended by her success. You're right. And and I think, you know, when they when the men do that kind of behavior, it's because they want to damage your reputation and and um, you know, they're trying to break you at some some type Why of way. Though? To break I mean, it. Does, does that make sense? So, Why? Because that's how he feel like he's gonna be able to control her and keep her. Yeah. <sighs> It's, but thank goodness she was able to get out of that situation. Right, right. Because, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, she she reluctantly told him that she made more money than him. And things seemed to fall apart, you know, with his mm-hmm. attitude after that. Um, he, his, I guess he became insecure, you know. Yes. And, and, and it's probably, like you said, a control issue. So, mm-hmm. so the answer is to destroy her. How is that? Right, right. right. It's it's a, it's a, a very immature, and, and you know, embarrass her at her job. Yeah, very uh, and and could and, and dangerous. Like you know, yep. It could, yep. it could be dangerous for um some women with um you know some men that could be taking it really off the chain or into crazy. Crazy land. Yes. <laughs> so she yes. could she could have her fired from her job or even got, you know, in domestic violence situation. Exactly. You know, can, oh. can start from that type of right. maturity. And, and after and, going through something like that, uh I, I would think it's healthy to take a breath. And it sounds it seems like that's what Carol was doing. She's taking yeah. a breath, she's forty one. And now she's got this 29-year-old uh, young guy, you know, uh, booty call type situation. Mm-hmm. And um, not looking for a relationship, just, you know, having fun. And the thing that, that had me laughing because um, Jeff, he really thought that he um, had ran some game on Carol to get her that's what that that means. Means. yes and, and and these men a lot of men like that don't even have a clue she already knew what she was planning right, this right. And, um but he thought he had did something yeah <laughs> so the ego the ego had keep these guys delusional in this situation so this, this part was funny to me it is and then part four brain on pause and you know what they say about idle minds. So, you know, here it is days later and Carol is like, you know, um, feeling too anxious to sit in the house. Oh, this is when she goes to the restaurant. But the funny thing is, you know, after her dinner, you know, she she ends up having another encounter with dude. And mm-hmm. um, she starts, le- you know, weakening in her resolve, in my opinion, at this point the attention is starting to um, intrigue her. Mm -hmm. And um, I think she realizes that she's, that she realizes that it's happening and yet kind of unable to stop it. 
So right. that's why the you know it's called brain on pause because right. you know I say here here was her second encounter and now she's wondering if something was actually going to come of this. At the same time, in the back of her mind, where she tucked her intelligence away, something was nagging at her subconscious by whispering that this calculating asshole had a motive. You know what I mean? <laughs> so she kind of knew, but. I think she was like getting a little, you know, she was weakening, you know, her resolve. <laughs> yep, she definitely was. And I'm like, oh, the cow don't do it. Don't do it. Right. Well, <laughs> part five kind of straightens that out because that part five is called awakening, right? Right. And she flies away and goes to Las Vegas for an extended getaway. So you, you kind of figure. She felt herself weakening over this dude and right. said to herself, let me just take a breather, you know, take a break. Let me get into a, you know, new some new scenery, have some spot right. treatments and, you know, and whatnot. And she does, you know, which I thought was a good move. You know it what was. I mean? It take, was. Yeah. And uh, the <laughs> funny thing is she left, she didn't tell Jeff that she was going and he right. was mad. <laughs> I mean, because her and Jeff has, they haven't, um, I mean, for, for Carol, you know, it really still just a booty call. It's just a hookup. Exactly. She's not trying to be in a, a, a relationship with Jeff. But Jeff, you know, like I said, these men with these egos, he thinks that she probably thinks that, well, you know. That's why he was mad, because he, he felt, when he found out, he went to the bar and was told that she flew to Las Vegas because he didn't even know. Right. He he was thinking this old woman couldn't get enough of him. Exactly. You know, and had the nerve to fly away just like that. Yeah. So he, he got a little a little space. dose of reality. You know, come back down to earth, dude. You know. No, you just, just because you're young don't doesn't mean that, you know, I, it, it just it's almost comical, you know what I mean? To just think you, you he was all of that like that. You know, that super ego or something else with some of these. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you. yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's back. Shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was shocked. It kind of shook his confidence. You know what I mean? But he needed that. He needed that. Yes, he did. He did. So when she gets back, he has the nerve to get a little pushy. You know, because he felt like, oh, I, I ain't put it down hard enough. Now I'm going to have to try a different tactic. Yeah. You know, and so she said, you know, in the story, she detects a little pushiness when she gets back. Like he's demanding that she come to his house, you know, and mm -hmm. she she reluctantly went. OK, mm -hmm. for, her, for another booty call. Right. And uh, this chapter, which is the final episode in this story, called Awakening. Because mm -hmm. she was lulled into a trance, I think. And she flew away to really kind of get back, get, get her mind right about it. Because she was feeling her, herself weaken over this attention she was getting from him. Right. And when she gets back, you know, his attitude kind of changed. So he, she gave him her phone number. He's calling her now and demanding that she come to his house, you know, <laughs> because his, 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 uh, his, 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 the control he thought he had was shaken. You know what I mean? So right. now you demand. Now he got, yeah. So now he had to change his tactic. Yes. But. The best part to me was after they had that hot, steamy romp like they did, she gets up to fix herself a glass of wine and with no finesse whatsoever did he say, I need some money. Now, come on. Yeah. Come on now. Because um, you didn't just hopped up and went to Vegas. <laughs> you know, that's what his brain was. Yeah. So now you must have money. So now, I mean, come, it, it just blows my mind. The the nerve, you know what I mean? The audacity. The audacity. <laughs> yeah. And she she got a chance to laugh and just said, what a fool you are. 
as she tossed a $20 bill at him and walked out the door. He was so insulted, she never even saw him again. He never came back to the bar again, which is... Yeah. Uh, he, he mean, because, like, I mean, he could have... Uh... And he could have tried to that that I mean, what did he expect? <laughs> so I think he he really tried to believe that she was in so enamored this old woman as he right. called he, her. He had her. He, so he had her wrapped around his finger. He really did. He really did. And her flying off to Vegas just shook him. You yeah. know. So he gonna just come out. Uh, he demands that she comes over has this hot, steamy sex with her, and then right afterwards turns well, around and says, I need some money. Are you kidding me? I'm so glad she had... He took her out to dinner. He ain't, yeah. trying, to, he ain't trying to one-up her and try to ask her to take her somewhere or go right. on a trip with her. Yeah. Uh, nothing. Right. So, I mean, he really, you know, ain't have had his his soul... He, he, he couldn't help but but show his cards with True. Right. in this last episode yep. because that's all I mean that really just let Carol know you know he wasn't really into her he was just trying to use her and right. and he was going to try to use her as a as a uh, paycheck oh you know from to get money and what she suspected all along was true right. you know so so I mean the last sentence though I just wondered uh you know she chalked it up to yet another experience, one that left her unscathed, thank God. Oh, and so, I mean, so, I, I mean, I'm glad that she felt that it, she was left unscathed. But um, mm -hmm. it didn't have to end that way. She, I think she lucked out on that. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes the situation, you know, some people lose... Um, Brain cells. <laughs> yeah, ain't it the truth? They get involved, and 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 one or the person or the other get yeah, you yep. know the new sight of trying to be um, you know, don't know how to handle rejection. Yeah, they don't know how to handle rejection, and they and they lose sight of their original agenda. Yep. yep. But you know, Jeff's agenda was always the same. Yeah. His and I guess hers was too, but I think women like Carol, you know, I mean, it's, it's so here's the part where men need to understand that it's not that women aren't wanting a relationship, right? Right. She almost got weak about it, you know, right. and had to fly away to get her mind right because of the attention. So it's not, you know... But you have to keep your guard up, you know, in, in situations. Right. Because Jeff clearly is not wanting to be in a strong, healthy relationship with Carol. No. That's not what he's there for. Nope. And so nope. she has to remain clear on that, even though he's, you know, he, he's showing her that in every way, but when the sex is involved, you know, it gets it gets cloudy. It does get cloudy. And I, I believe she fully intended for it to be a booty call and she felt like liberated and refreshed that she did that and had no intentions of having a relationship with this guy. Uh but it gets messy with the attention. Yeah. You know? Um that's and luckily, you know, he showed his card so early in right. in the game. Had he had no game, and... he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> so, so, so Carol got lucky with that one because a lot of times, you know, some yep. sometimes they could be more clever, and they could play the long. They could play a long game. She got so. lucky, and she knows it. That's why she said she got away unscathed. Thank God. That's. Yeah. She, you know, he showed his cards and it snapped her right into reality. And I, and I think that, you know, the fact that she jumped up and left Vegas um, also threw him off his game even more. And that's mm -hmm. why he, mm -hmm. he couldn't, you know, he <laughs> he couldn't keep his, his game. Well, he didn't really have no game to begin with. But, but I it think threw him completely off. off. And so when he got back, when she got back, he was know, mad. 
he was mad and so she was able to see exactly and they say in a, in a relationship when you're trying to figure somebody out find out how they act when, when they're mad exactly and exactly. that's a whole lot if you yeah. want to stay with a person yeah uh -huh. so she was able to trigger that and and see how he responded and she she got the answer she needed sure did sure did yeah, I think so far this is this is one of my favorite stories. I really do <laughs> like bells and whistles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so that's it. That was the first five of the bells and whistles. Our, our our wrap up. Um, so let me see how long did we do? Yeah. So I think we're about done. About thirty minutes yep. in. Yep. So we're starting a new story on Sunday. I'm going to send out a preview, you know, the uh, preview about it tomorrow. It's going to be a story called After the Fact. Mm -hmm. This is another good one. Well, they're, I, I feel they're all good, you know, yeah, in my exactly. opinion, but this is another good one, After the Fact. So um, I hope you all will visit the YouTube channel where all the pod, all, there's three podcasts episodes listed and all the stories are there you can catch up you can go to the website which could bring you directly to the youtube podcast channel um yeah also please um get the book you know because yes. this is all based on the book that you wrote back exactly. in, in published in 2007 so definitely we want to encourage you to purchase the book as well you know yes. purchase the book buy extra one Give it, give it to um, you know someone you know that you know dealing with dealing with dysfunctional relationships um, as, as as a gift because it's a lot of lessons, it's a lot of lessons in these stories, and it opens up a lot of good discussions um, so that you know you can learn and grow. Yes. So um, you know definitely the the book is is available on Amazon, correct? Yes. So if you Amazon. go to my website, there's links on the website to purchase the book. Yep. So definitely purchase the book also, you know, and, and join the podcast on YouTube. And um, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Keep, keep up with us there. But we appreciate. We want to thank everyone, all our subscribers so far and, and, and everyone following. Um the YouTube channel and um, Sid's work and all her projects. So we definitely want to thank and appreciate everyone that's contributed and, and subscribed and, and liked the videos and, and um, joined our podcast so far today. Yes. Thank you, everyone. So, all right, Carla. So uh, we will talk soon and everyone, you have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.